like to go over the joints that we're going to mobilize today so that we'll know exactly what we're talking about and we're all on the same page. Uh, the, a very important joint that's uh, overlooked in uh, many therapy situations is a sternoclavicular joint. Of course, it's one of the few joints that has a meniscus, a little disc uh, cartilage inside it. And it has two movements that, when dysfunctional, present a major problem in arm abduction. So in abduction, it's supposed to drop down. The, it's, the medial head's supposed to drop down in abduction, abduction. And in horizontal adduction, the medial part of the clavicle should go posterior. So those are the two, two movements that are, can be dysfunctional in the, the sternoclavicular joint. The acromioclavicular joint, if you roll down the clavicle and all of a sudden you find a little bump, a little groove or a bump, sometimes it's a groove, sometimes it's a bump. If you just elevate your shoulder up and down, you can feel the acromion moving on the clavicle. The acromion actually moves on the clavicle. That's what you're feeling when that's up. When that joint is dysfunctional, remember that this is the only true contact to the axial skeleton for, from the shoulder girdle, the, the sternoclavicular joint, because it's bone on bone. So it's the only true connection to the axial skeleton is through the uh, chromioclavicular joint. When it's dysfunctional, it can cause a lot of problems in the uh, in shoulder abduction and uh, other movements of the shoulder, but particularly abduction. The glenohumeral joint is a polyaxial joint and a very complex joint, and its integrity is based on the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff muscles are designed to help hold the humerus in place during all the numerous movements, the most mobile joint of the body, and that's what the rotator cuff does is help pull it up and bind it up into the uh, uh, into the glenoid fossa during these motions. When dysfunctional, it can be a major problem, as we know. The movements at the glenohumeral joint, and there are 10 or 11 of them, depending on how you count them, we're going to count them like this.